Hello, beautiful. Welcome to another Thursday Talk with me, Susanna Kay, and the Organizing Mindset Podcast. I'm so glad that you're here. Today, we are talking about paper peace, how to tame that paper tiger and work with the onion method, no matter how much paper you have to go through. So whether you have boxes and boxes or laundry bags and grocery bags full, or you just have enough that you feel like it is too much, this is the one for you. I'm so glad that you're here. As you hop on, let me know who you are and where you're joining me from. And also tell me in the comments, do you love your paper organizing system? Do you have a system that you already love and you're working for you? Or is your paper system just not quite working how you need it to for your personality and lifestyle? I would love to know in the comments. All right. Well, we have a really good day today because the onion method and sorting through papers, that is the onion method has been one of those you know, game changers for people who feel overwhelmed with the amount of papers that they have to sort. And we'll talk a bit about why papers are so hard and some of the mental things you can do to make it a bit easier when you do have a lot of papers to sort. And um, yeah, and I'll just give you a bunch of resources and some ideas and try to make it easier for you today. Because that's my goal. All right. And also remember, if you are my one of my path members, all of my pathfinders today at noon, we have our weekly check-in. So we will be going more in depth into this topic. We'll talk even more about the onion method and some of the more precise details of it, as well as anything else that we need to do during our check-in, because we're always helping each other out. If you're feeling blocked or just need some ideas or whatever, then check-ins for you. All right, so I asked you, uh, and in the comments at the beginning, do you love your paper organizing system? So I would love to see what you had to say. Uh, let's see. So Mary is here. Hi, Mary. And she says, yes, the action file has been working great for me. Awesome. Yay. I love that. And lovely Marie is here. She says, live from Alaska with blessings on this fabulous Thursday talk. Um, she says, enjoy and stay blessed and a bunch of other awesome, sweet things. I love it. I love it. She says that she is slowly learning the paper path system. So we'll have to see, but so far it has helped tremendously. Oh, yay. And yes, you are our newest member right now and our newest um, course enrollee. So you've not even been working on it that long and it's already working tremendously. I'd love to hear that. You're doing a great job. I, I'm just amazed by how much work you're putting in and you're doing the things that need to be done and you're just getting it done and you're doing awesome. Um, hi, Sharon. Sharon's here from New Jersey. And, yep, and all of our path members are saying hi to each other. I love that in the chat area. That's beautiful. Joyce is here. She says, good morning from Southwest Virginia. And ah, uh, thank you. Lovely Marie says, don't forget to like and share if you want to see more videos like this. You're so good. You always remember the things that I always forget to say. Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. And Barbara from North Carolina. Eloise is here. She's from the cruise ship in the middle of the sea. Wow. I think that you went for the strangest place that people are joining from today. I love that. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, Jeannie's here. Good morning from Washington State. And Sharon, Texas. Uh, Kazi is here. She's glad to be back here and back on the wagon. Yes, yay. I'm glad to. Melody is here from Virginia. She says she's not happy with her current paper organizing system. She needs efficiency with paucity of time and constant interruptions. Right, and that is one of the things that's very valid. Is if you can get interrupted all the time, where did you leave off? How do you break it down into smaller steps because you don't have two hour time chunks? That's so valid, and uh, we'll try to talk about that a little bit today and even more in the path membership. Um, or we can check in at noon. All right, Elaine is here, she says from San Francisco. Yay, love the challenge yesterday. She just says, How do I get? Days number two and three, uh, because she missed them. Yes, if you're registered for the challenge, then you have the link to the challenge schedule page. All of the different emails have that link at the bottom of the email, as well as have it up higher. But that challenge schedule page has everything in case you missed anything at all. So if you have any trouble finding it, let me know. Shoot me an email at hello at and I'll make sure that you get to it. 
Good morning, Joanne. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. All right. Well, let's dive in today as everybody's hopping on. I love to see everybody here. Suzanne is here too. Welcome, Suzanne. All right. So today, like I said, paper piece. Just with papers, I find one of the hardest things about papers is the stress that comes with them, right? And usually the stress is, you know, somewhat about seeing papers around and knowing that there's piles and piles to go through or an overstuffed file cabinet to go through. But usually that's not the main stress. The main stress is usually the fear of what, um, what might be in there that I'm missing and I don't realize it's in there. So I might not do it. What might I need? And I won't be able to find it in an emergency. So I'll be digging and digging through all of those papers and I might not be able to find what I need. Or what if I like to hold the wrong paper? That's a huge fear that people have is when you're letting go of papers, what if you pick the wrong ones to let go of and you find out you need them later, right? So there are so many different fears that go along with papers, um, coming across things that you really don't want to remember or want to deal with. I mean, across things that you missed out on the opportunity, like a check that's expired that was for you. Uh, there's just so much. So if we can find peace in our papers, that's the goal. So that's goal number one, find peace in the papers. The way that we do that is we make sure that we separate out the things that are very important that we need to actually do before they get filed. Hence the action file, right? Actually, I have a little image that I can share with you on this one, I believe. So this is my foundation. This is how I structure uh, both the Paper Path course and the path, Paper Path system. This is the entire system that the Paper Path course teaches. And you'll see at the bottom of this pyramid, um, if you're on the podcast, it's okay. You can check out the video version or I also, I'll explain it to you. But so this is a pyramid and the bottom of the pyramid is the foundation. So if you have a weak foundation in your pyramid, then what's going to happen at the top? It's all going to crumble, right? And it won't be able to hold itself together. So a lot of times we do set up paper systems and parts of them are really good, but the foundation underneath is weak. So when the foundation underneath is weak, it all crumbles. And you might have found that a paper system used to work for you and now it's just not going to be working anymore. That's because when your life shifts, some of those foundations need to shift with it so that they stay strong. So this is the structure that I like to go through. Um, I've been doing this for almost 20 years with people, hitting the most important foundations first so we get something nice and solid. So first, at the very bottom of the period, the strongest part of our foundation are those new uh, incoming and active papers. So that's your mail, that's the to-do papers, that's everything that goes in the action file. Right? So you already have your foundation for your entire paper path system, this whole pyramid of um, dependencies. And the action file is your first step. And you did that this week if you joined the challenge. If you did not join the challenge, it's okay. You can still join it and watch all the replays before they come down. That's perfectly fine. You can go to the website, spanakay.com, and in the shop area. You can still join the challenge for free and just go to the challenge schedule page once you get that email. But once you have your action file and you know that your incoming and your active papers, they're going to be safe. So you don't have to worry about forgetting something important or losing one of those check made out to you or the IRS notification in one of the piles and forgetting about it, right? That's all taken care of and now that's safe. The next thing that we want to make sure is safe is our emergency information. And this would be medical emergencies most mostly, but also a little bit of that just emergency preparation if you had to evacuate or if something went on. So that second part of your foundation is the emergency medical folder. And if you've been following me for a while now, then you've already put together your emergency medical folder because that one I also do a free challenge. I give it away for free. You get it in the shop, zanakay.com. Or it also comes with the Spark Life Finder and the Paper Path Course. So that emergency section, that's another one. We'll have it nice and solid with that emergency medical folder. 
So remember, we've got our action file on the bottom. Next up is the emergency medical folder. So that way we know in an emergency, medically, we can find anything that we need and we can take it with us to the hospital and communicate it to the doctors and the people that are going to help us, right? So now we've got our incoming and our to-do papers. Those are all safe. They're not going to get lost in the file. Now we know that we can get our hands on the medical emergency information. What's next? What is the next thing that you need to make sure is solid? Well, next, let's finish solving that problem of the fear of not being able to find an important piece of information or important paper when you need it. So we're going to look at those important life papers and information. And with this step, usually I don't say that this step has to be complete before you move on. Because um, as you move through the rest of the triangle, you will be coming across all the things that you need to complete this step. But you need to have that structure in place. So your important life papers and information, that would be your Spark Life Finder, if you want the easy uh, tool, or just creating your own life finder. So what it is, is basically one place that you or your loved ones know they can find all of the most important information. So insurance policy numbers, bank account, credit card numbers, passwords, um, information about the house and assets that you own, information about everybody in the household, you know, social security numbers, IDs, all of the kids' information, the pets' information. There's just so many things that go into your life papers. So that's why we have the Spark Life Finder, right? And when you get the Spark Life Finder, once you've got that assembled, now you're ready. As you come across information, you can be entering it in. So once you have that put together, whether you buy the Spark Life Finder and have it mailed to you, you get it digitally, print it out and put it in a binder, or you create your own. And once you've got that, um, or it's in the Paper Path course, we actually go through Spark Life Binder with you. Um, and the next step will be those files. Because now we can focus on the files and the archive papers because the fear is now gone, right? You know that you have all of your active to-do papers and your mail and the really important things that need to be done. Those are safe. You've got a system for those. Those are safe. You will not lose them in a pile. You know that if there's a medical emergency, you know that this is what I can quickly grab and take with me to the hospital or to a doctor's appointment or first responders can find for me and for my family. Then you know that, okay, all of the other important information that I was so afraid if something happened, I would not be able to find in my papers. I've got this life binder or I've got a life binder for that information. It might not be completely filled in yet, but as you come across all the papers doing your paper system, you'll be filling it in. Instead of having to go and try to find it now, as you come across it, you're filling it in. So you're feeling a lot more comfortable because all of those things that are stressing you out the most are now solved, right? You've got a plan, you've got a system that's already in place, so you don't have to worry about that. Now the only worry left is, okay, well, this feels like a big job. <laughs> this feels like a lot to do, putting together the rest of my files, my archive papers. Um, sorting through all the rest of my papers. But the nice thing is it does not have to be a big job, right? That's where the paper path course also comes in. It's walked you through all of those foundations, but now it's going to walk you through, okay, well, this is exactly how you set up your short-term file system. And this is exactly how to use it. This is exactly how to set up your archive system. That would be your file cabinet and your fireproof and waterproof safe, right? This is exactly how you, your personality type, label the file folders like this and put them in this order. I'll do that. So it's all broken down into small steps. It does not need to be really stressful. But in that next part of that pyramid, you're just building the system. So you don't even need to fill it quite yet with all the extra papers. Just build the system and fill it with whatever's already organized. And then you finish off with that special papers. So anything that does not fit into a normal filing system, like your taxes and receipts and memorabilia paperwork, caregiver, 
um, information if you're a caregiver, all the information you need for being a caregiver, all of those special papers, that's kind of like the icing on the cake. That's the last bit that we do. And then you've got your whole system all set up and it's already started to be, uh, be filled in, already starting to work for you. And then this is where you start organizing and sorting through all of those papers because now they all have a home and you know where they go because the system is nice and easy and it flows from one section to the next very easily. So you know exactly where everything's going to go, right? And you know that you're always going to have all of those fears are going to be covered because you've got systems that can grow with you. And no matter what changes in your life, you don't have to keep changing that system. It will always be a solid foundation to support you. So that is why I have the paper path system because just teaching you one thing is not that helpful if all the rest is still chaos and you're still stressed out about your paper, right? So we talked about our foundations. You already built your action file. Many of you already have the emergency medical holder and a lot of you already have your spark light binder and are filling it in. You're in the process of filling it in or you might've already filled it in. If you don't have any of these things, that's okay. The Paper Path course, that's, that walks you through each one of these as well, and it breaks it down into tiny little steps. So even if you're like Melody, who says that she's got very little time and it stresses her out with papers, these like 15-minute steps can fit into your day. So it's not something that you have to save hours for, which is good. So let's talk about once those foundations are done and you know, I'm hitting my desk, and you know that Okay, I'm going to be able to find what I need when I need it. I have my emergency information that I can grab and take with me. All of my to do papers are safe. I end up getting mixed up in a pile. Now, my only stress is getting the rest of these papers, these older papers, getting them sorted and into the system. So, that's what we're going to talk about today is okay, well, how do we sort those and get those into the system without losing our minds? Because it can be really difficult. So, we just talked about why papers are so hard, right? With papers, the other reasons why sorting is so hard, when you're looking at those boxes and boxes of papers, that's a hundred tiny decisions easily in one stack, right? So at least a hundred decisions in one small stack. So it's really hard to see the progress which can make you feel overwhelmed and defeated a lot of times. Even if you made 100 decisions that day, you feel like you did not get very far. And it'll wear out your brain very quickly, right? The more decisions we have to make, the quicker that our brain uh, will wear out, especially the harder decisions if you're trying to decide between a number of different categories. And then if you're like me, <laughs> then there's a lot of times where you worry that you won't remember what decision you made. So. You won't know, am I going to be able to find this again? What if I forget where I'm filing it? So especially as out of sight, out of minders, we have a problem trusting these systems where we can't see it. So making sure that we have some way to remember what decisions we made so we could make, this, make the same decision again with that type of paper next time so we don't have multiple places with that type of paper and also so we know that we can find it if we need it. We also, a lot of times we worry about letting go of the wrong thing. So having something available to help you make those decisions is really helpful. And then there's just the obvious. There's so much of them. <laughs> there are so many papers, right? So that is why papers are hard when it comes to sorting. Hundreds of decisions in one small stack. You can't really see your progress very easily until you've gotten way into it. You might not remember what decisions you made, and that can be scary. Um, you worry about letting go of the wrong thing. That can be a very valid concern, and there are just so much of them. I want to go to the chat area really quickly, but then I'm just going to address each one of those and how to solve each one of those worries and give you a technique for these different worries so you can get through these papers. All right. and. Um, just so you know, right now with the Paper Path course, which this teaches you even more in depth about the onion method and sorting papers and all that good stuff, at SusannaK.com in the shop. You can find the Paper Path course right now. It has a bonus, a welcome party bonus, which is kind of a fast start, which will help you 
figure out exactly what's what, how to get going, the best way to work through the course, and just make it a lot faster for you. And a free month if you're not already a Pathfinder, free month of the membership if you're interested. But hi, Brenda Jean. I see, see that she says good morning in the chat. Hello. Grandma C. Connie is here from Kansas. Welcome. Uh, Oh no, Lori says, is this the Thursday 321 live session? Because earlier I ended up on the session from seven days ago. Yes, this is the one um, a lot of times until we go live, it might not pull up the live because it hasn't started yet. So until one or 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time, sometimes you might need to click again when it gets to time. Hi, Rosella. From New York, she's getting back to organizing my incoming papers. Yay, wonderful. Karen is here. She says, this is wonderful. Oh, good. Wonderful. I'm so glad. It helps when you know what you need, right? When somebody just says, okay, do this. That helps me so much, at least. Hi, Earl Ann from Texas. Good to see you. Oh, lovely Marie says, how often should we be updating the information in binders? I do the medical and caregiver binder as soon as possible. Um, so if I don't get lost, but the Spark Life I do not care how often to update the information. And that's a great question. So with the Spark Life Finder, remember that's the uh, part of the triangle, part of our foundations for the important papers. So this is your quick grab and go in case of an emergency that has all of your important information, like your insurance policy numbers and details and contact information and uh, everything. It's just got all the things for you and your loved ones. So with the Spark Life Finder, um, I say just update it whenever you have a, you know, time to go through any changes that have been made, or um, at least once a year I like to look through it and see if anything has changed. But most of the time, when changes happen, a lot of times there's a piece of paper that tells you about the change, right? When the insurance policy renews, they send you something in the mail. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll put those papers, I'll tuck them into my Spark Life Finder or into my to enter folder. Usually I just tuck those right in my Spark Life Finder because mine's easy to reach. And once there's several papers, then I'll hop in and just make the changes. And you can totally hand write the changes if you have the digital and print versions. You can always hand write the changes if you want to really quickly as soon as you notice that there's a change. And then later on in time, you can go in and Type it in your digital version, make it really pretty and print it out if you wanted to. Um, pretty is not as important as complete. <laughs> but yes, so that's just generally what I do, but it all depends on how often things change for you and what your comfort level is. So that's up to you. Uh, thank you, Denise. Um, enjoy. <laughs> Is that a little better now? Can anybody hear the hear the button gone away? So you know it's better. But um yeah, for some reason, maybe now. Can you hear her now? Any better? Or maybe now? All right, hopefully let me know if now sounds better. Um, and if it's still breaking up or not, just let me know. <laughs> Everybody's saying better. Okay, good. Um, yeah, our the streaming service has been weird. So 
All right. Looks like everybody's saying good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, like I was saying, is I totally get it, Karen, that sometimes it's just not the right time. And that is okay. When the time is right, then you'll be ready because you're building that foundation of the incoming papers, which that's the most important thing, right? So, um, yeah, I'm so glad that you're here and I'm glad that you're with us. So keep hanging out with us. All right. Um, I think. Okay, yeah. The lovely Marie said with her Spark Life Binder, she has both the digital and the handwritten version. So that's perfect. Yeah, you can always handwrite on your printed version and then later on type it in and print it out and make it nice and pretty. It does not have to be pretty to start with. That's perfectly fine as long as it's accurate. That's much more important. All right. So let's see. Next, um, Sharon. I guess Sharon might be still having problems with sound. Let me know if. Oh, never mind. Um, oh, yeah. Kathy says her car is 18 years old, so she was blessed to have it that long. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Suzanne. Yeah, they're, they're having a weird thing going on with the video streaming service today. So I don't know, but hopefully they get that fixed because that's awful. <laughs> but I'm glad it's fixed now. All right, so I think that I would each of these different things about paper sorting one at a time, right? So let's start with the fact that sorting through papers, that's a hundred tiny little decisions. So it's really hard to get through that many decisions because your brain will get exhausted, right? I don't know about you, but sometimes just trying to make a decision one time between you know, 50 different things, my brain tired with just one decision, try to do it a hundred times and I'm toast. <laughs> so with the hundred tiny decisions, then that's where I came up with the onion method. Um, the onion method, and I don't know if I have a slide with the onion method on it. The onion method is actually something within the paper path course. So I'm not gonna teach you the whole onion method just because we only have so much time. Um, yeah, I don't have the whole onion method on my slide, do I? Which is fine. But, um, Yes, the onion method, I'm not going to teach you the whole thing. There's a video on it, the paper path course in the quick sort section. But the general concept with the onion method is that there are fewer categories that you are sorting your papers into. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, I just got distracted. I'm breaking into a cold sweat just thinking about my pals of accusing papers. <laughs> Um, so with the onion method, it's giving you fewer categories to sort into while you're sorting. So I call it the onion method because like an onion, it has layers, right? With an onion, you can peel off one layer and then there's another layer. You peel that off, there's another layer. So what I like to do is when you have a massive amount of papers, let's narrow down the categories that you're sorting into with those first times going through it. This is the anti only touch at once <laughs> method. So you're going to go through your papers. And usually my first time going through the papers, I'm just doing keep or go. That's enough for your brain to handle, right? And like with the paper path course, you have the papers database, you have the how long to keep important documents guide. You have the assistance to make those decisions easier. Plus you have a paper policy that I'll tell you a little bit about in a minute. So the keep, is a lot easier to make those decisions because you do have that support and that extra information. But the first time you're going through all of the papers in the boxes, it's keep or go. That's enough of a choice to make. I don't care where you're gonna keep it yet. I don't care what, how it's gonna go, whether it's shred, recycle, give to somebody else, doesn't matter. Keep or go. That's the first onion layer. And then once you've done keep or go with at least a good chunk of your papers, at least that box, um, if you've got multiple boxes, but a lot of times I do all of the boxes first that way. But your next layer, now you're going to get to your categories. So you'll do your really broad categories. Maybe you do like finance and medical and education, things like that. And you try to do 10 or fewer categories. I like to aim for five because my brain hurts very easily <laughs> when I have to think too hard. And you go through your papers and you organize them into the really broad categories. So that's a layer, right? Next layer, you take one of the broad categories and you organize that into the broad categories that have to do with that layer, such as if it's finance, 
maybe it's, you know, credit cards and loans, banking, uh, checking and savings, investments, uh, whatever your next layer of categories are. And you keep doing that until you've got a reasonable level of categories to then go into your file system. So it's, it sounds like it would take a lot more time, right? Because you're touching the same papers more than once and making decisions on them more than once. But in reality, you can get through them so much faster than you could if you were only touching them once and trying to find that final category, that savings account category, when you've also got it mixed in with categories for medical lab test results and old resumes and school report cards. It makes it too big just doing it once. And your brain gets so tired. <laughs> so when you have the onion method and you're doing it in layers, it's going to go so much faster because each time you sort it, it's just going to be boom, boom, boom. And you've already decided whether you're keeping it or not, right? So you've already taken that decision off the table for the rest of the sorting. You don't have to keep sitting there and thinking, do I need to keep this or not with every paper? So much less stressful as well. You can do a longer sorting session with the onion method than you could without it. So that's the general concept of the onion method. Now I go super step-by-step -step in the paper path course and I tell you what categories to sort things in for the different levels, but at least now you know the concept so you can recreate that concept for yourself if you wanted to, uh, or if you grab the paper path course, you'll already be familiar with the concept when you hit that section and be like, oh, I'm a pro. <laughs> it always feels good when you're already familiar with it, right? So with the onion method, you have fewer categories. That helps you break it down into smaller steps because you can do just a handful and not lose track of where you were and not have to think about, okay, well, get back in the groove, figure out what I was doing. I've got 50 piles around me. <laughs> And you're going to make faster progress that you can see. Because remember, one of the things is so many papers, right? And that we can't see our progress. Well, when you can't see your progress, then it is very defeating. Sorry, the meal's here. You can't hear my dogs. <laughs> there they are. Um, but yes, you can't see your progress very well when you're doing some of the other methods. But you get very fast progress that's visible with onion method. And we need that in order to help motivate us to keep going. One of the other reasons that sorting papers is so hard, sometimes just so many papers. It's very defeating to feel like you just did two hours of work during the day, right? Sorry, sorting your papers. And you look and you barely made a dense in the box. And there are so many boxes still left to go. So that right there can be so overwhelming on its own, just knowing how many papers you still have left to go. So one of the things that I have people do if they're in that situation and it is stressing them out is out of sight means a peaceful mind, right? This works for many different things because of my out of sight, out of mind years, we think that we have more peace having things in sight. We don't, <laughs> we just can see our stresses. But especially with boxes and boxes or piles and bags of papers, Seeing them as you slowly go through, going through them, seeing all that's left can be very defeating. So out of sight means peaceful mind. What you can do is hide them from yourselves, right? Hide them from yourself. So put them in a back guest room or put them into a closet. Just leave one box out, right? So you've got your insight. You won't forget to go through your papers because you will have the box that you're working on. But even if you have to turn that pile of boxes into a table by throwing a tablecloth over it, that's fine too. Just get it out of sight and pull out one box at a time and work on that. And you'll be surprised how quickly you get through them that way without so much stress. That also helps you break it down now into small steps. You know me, I love my small steps, right? So break it down into those small steps and it's going to be so much more manageable and fit in your day better. You don't need an hour or two hours to sort papers. You can do it in five minute chunks if you need to, 10 minute chunks. You can do it five papers at a time if you want to. So small steps. And then, you know, when you have so many papers, making sure 
that that problem does not occur again. That's huge. If you have that overstuffed filing cabinet, that one can be very stressful as well because you can't file new things in there. And whenever you try, it's just a reminder. I need to go through this because so many of these are probably old and need to go. So in order to solve the there are so many papers problem from ever coming up again, set up a self-purging file system. So that way before they even hit the file cabinet, you've got just what you need for just the amount of time that you need. So the things that you only need to keep for a year or less don't hit your file cabinet. Now, being afraid that you might not remember what decision you made. I know this is one for me. Uh, my memory is off terrible. And the older I get, the worse it gets. <laughs> I'm like by the time I'm 70, I'm pretty sure I won't know my name anymore. But if you are also afraid of not remembering what decisions you made, then set up what I call a paper policy for yourself. Now I have one of these that I is one of the downloads that you get in the Paper Path course. Uh, we talk about the paper policy in that first step, that incoming papers and decision making. But this paper policy, this is basically one place where you are writing down the decisions that you've made on your papers. So when a bank statement comes in for your checking account, you keep track of, okay, so when a bank statement comes in from such and such bank, I have decided to file it here in my paper filing system, this folder, I will keep it for this amount of time. And then when it's time to purge it, if there are no other problems, then it will be shred. You write it all down. You could, this also works for digital files. Maybe when my savings account statement comes in, then I have decided that I will review it to make sure nothing looks wrong. And I will double check against my deposit slips. And I will download from my bank account the PDF version and save it to such and such file folder on my computer. And then I will try the deposit slips and the savings account statement. But if you're writing each of these things down as a new type of paper comes in, then you never have to question A, where to find that paper, and B, uh, whether you are filing it in the same place each time. So you can be much more consistent because I don't know how many times I've worked with people where they start filing in one folder, but some of the folders have similar names or they don't find the folder right away. So then they start a new folder and now they've got two places that they're filing those. And then they get frustrated because when they realize it, they've got two folders that both have their checking accounts statements, then they don't trust any of the system anymore. So it all just crumbles. So if you have a paper policy, it can be consistent, right? You will always handle it in the same way. You know how long you've decided to keep it. You know exactly how to let it go when it's time to let it go. And you never have any questions. And if you need to find it, you just look at your paper policy. So that paper policy is a huge comfort when you're organizing your papers, especially when you're setting up a new system. So creating a paper policy will help you remember what decisions you've made and be consistent. And it also helps to have a system where each part of the system naturally flows together, right? If your paper system just can, consists of a filing cabinet and your action file, and that is your filing system, then you're probably missing a number of pieces, right? You're probably missing the parts, the self-purging parts. You're missing the part that helps it flow between the two and make sure that you're keeping only what you really need. All of that good stuff. So before we go on to the next bullet point, worry about letting go of the wrong paper, I wanted to hop over to the comments really quickly. Um, uh, Pamela says, uh, oh, I need to go through files. This is encouraging. Thank you. It is hard. It really is. It really, really is. Um, Oh, Melanie says, arrived you late, overslept, then had a little difficulty finding the proper link to join. But hi, you're Melanie. Hi, Melanie. I'm glad that you're here. Aw. And Pamela says, organizing my files for what I need to keep seems to be a problem. Organizing by month doesn't seem to work very well. Yeah, well, that's one of the things that um, 
if you're trying to organize things just by month as far as things that, well, I guess it depends. That's a very complex answer. <laughs> like I want to answer, but there's so many questions that I have in order to give you the right answer. But hopefully, um, I don't remember if you're a PATH member. I don't remember off the top of my head. Uh, let me know because your name is very familiar, but good to see you here often. Um, but if you're a PATH member, then join us for either the office hours or the Thursday PATH member session or email me with your question. And I just have a couple of other questions and I can help you out. I can absolutely help you out. Lovely movie says, I do it sparingly throughout the day for 25 minutes with some good relaxing music. That is awesome, yay, yes. Then he asked, will this be here for a replay? I missed the bunch. And yes, lovely Marie was nice to help. Yes, there will be a replay. And yeah, on YouTube, after it's done, it stays up for 30 days for the public YouTube. It stays up for six months if you're a PATH member, 30 days if you're not, but you've got 30 days to watch it at minimum. So hopefully that helps. Um, Mary says, oh yeah, for, um, Mary says, to Kazia about her accusing papers. Kazia, no condemnation, just get started with the onion method and you will be amazed at how many papers get thrown away. Most of them. Yeah, Mary Davis is, um, she's done our paper path course and she's got her system set up and she's just like flowing with it. She's awesome, I love it. So Mary's the one, she can tell you. <laughs> Catherine says, where do you put your paper policy? For me, I put my paper policy in the very front with my supplies and my action file because that's where all the papers come in anyways. So I have my paper policy right up front there, but if there's a number of different places that you can keep it, completely up to you if you wanna keep it, you know, in a specific place in your file cabinet or short-term files, but I find the active files easiest for me. Yes, she says, I need to do the paper policy to put my Spark Life Finder for a reminder. And yeah, and that Spark Life Finder is absolutely a possibility of a place too. Hi, Barbara, I good to see you. Oh, Kazia says, thanks to Mary for the encouragement. Um, oh, good. Barbara says, I started, so I don't know if it works yet, but just went through 10 bags of shredded and shredded records from 1972. Wow, Barbara. Woo, woo, woo. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. That is so great. You just left, let go of all that weight, <laughs> you know, all that weight of 10 bags of papers. So I'm excited for you. Thanks for sharing. You're doing great. Okay, so really quickly, we're wrapping up, but worrying about letting go of the wrong paper. We all have this worry. <laughs> it can be paralyzing sometimes. So make sure that you have a resource to check with in order to help you make those decisions, whether it's the PATH membership or the Paper PATH course, um, in the paper path course, we've got the how long to keep important documents. That's also part of the Spark Life Finder, by the way. Or if you're a path member, you've got the papers database, plus anything not in the database. And there you can ask it and I'll add it to the database. But have the resources and then also learn the why questions to ask yourself. So there are really good questions that you can ask yourself about your papers to help you determine if this is something you really need or not. Because just being told how long something, I mean, that's great, it's easier, but understanding why you would need to keep a paper and why you would not is even more important. So that's why in the Paper Path course, one of the things that we go through are the questions to ask of the why. So figure out why you would need to keep it. What would you use it for? What are you afraid that you would need on that paper? And asking the right questions can really help you uh, dissipate that fear of letting go of the wrong paper because you will understand your paper so much better and understand why you need to keep certain ones and why you don't need to keep others. So know your why. All right, we have one more bullet point left. Um, I wanted to go back to the chat really quickly. <laughs> oh, yay, Pamela is celebrating uh, Barbara as well. Yay, Barbara. And uh, lovely Marie says, way to go, Barbara. Keep up the awesome work. Yeah, 10 bags of shredded records is huge. 
Peg says, I play music on my iPhone and keep the phone in my apron pocket. The music helps me keep working, especially working on the task I would rather avoid, <laughs> right? Yes, music is it's surprising how much it helps. That's why I use music so much in our group hikes and our office hours, because it can just get you into that zone um, and just make it so much easier. <laughs> All right, so we already talked about our papers. Why are papers so hard? And they're hard because you have a hundred tiny decisions in a little pile. So that's a lot of decision making, which wears out your brain and it's very hard to see progress. We talked about how with papers, you might be afraid that you won't remember what decisions you made. So you might be inconsistent in where you file things, or you might be afraid that you won't be able to find it again once you filed it. We talked about worrying about letting go of the wrong paper and how that can make organizing your papers so much harder. It's just that fear of accidentally letting go of the wrong one. And then we talked about there are just so much of them, right? There's so much paper in our lives, so much, that it can be overwhelming. Sometimes just seeing how much is left to sort can really be draining. So in order to get past those hundred tiny decisions problem and wearing out your brain, using something like the onion method, where you're using fewer categories, small steps, it breaks it down to the small steps, and then you have faster progress that you can actually see is going to make it so much easier to get through your papers. It takes the stress off of your brain so you don't feel like you just ran a marathon after just 10 minutes. When you feel like you have so many papers and you're just not making any progress and you still see how many are left, out of sight is a peaceful mind. So sometimes just hiding all except for the one box or bag or stack that you're working on can help relieve your brain so you're not thinking about how much progress you've not made or how much there is still to go. And then solving that problem for the future, use self-purging files. Create yourself a self-purging file system so your file cabinet does not get overfilled and overwhelming as well. If you're afraid that you won't remember what decisions you made about paper, so you'll be inconsistent or you're afraid you won't be able to find the paper once you filed it, then make sure to create yourself a paper policy. And this is something exclusive to myself as well. I created a paper policy for the Paper Path course. But your paper policy is a record of all of the decisions you've made for each paper type. You can always be consistent and you don't have to make that decision ever again. You can just look down the page and find the paper easily, file the paper easily, and not have to think about it. Plus, having a system for your papers that flows, right? Where things flow into the next part of the system and do their thing and then flow into the next part and it's logical and it is easy. Because if you only have your incoming paper system and your file cabinet, you're probably missing some very important pieces. So um, having a system that flows is really important. And if you're worried about letting go of the wrong paper, not only is it helpful to have resources where you can ask or refer to for those paper types, what's recommended as far as keep or go, but learning why will help you so much more in the future. Learning the questions to ask, what that will help you decide if you need that paper still or you don't. Why you would need to keep that paper or why you don't need to keep that paper is such a more powerful and confidence building skill than just being told keep it or go. But having the keeper go as a backup and an extra resource for those times where you're just feeling weak and having a hard time is also really helpful. So I told you the paper pass system. I showed you the pyramid for the paper pass system, right? All of the different parts that we have for our system. And that's where we had our incoming papers were the bottom of the system. So that way, all of that is safe. We're not worried about the important papers getting lost in the shuffle as we organize things. We know that we won't miss anything important that comes in or that we're, we have to do. Then we had our emergency papers was our next level where we want to make sure that our emergency medical information 
and quick emergency like evacuation and home information is at our fingertips. So us, our loved ones, first responders, doctors at the hospital can all have the information they need quickly. Then we talk about our important papers, which is the next level of importance to get that system set up. You don't have to fill it in before you move on because you will fill it in as you go through the next steps, but creating your system for your important life information, creating your own life finder so that you and your loved ones know where the important information is. And if something were to happen, you can grab it and go because you can't take your file cabinet with you. Trust me, I've tried. <laughs> it's heavy. So having that binder where you and your loved ones know anything and everything that you need in an urgent situation or just need to access often, that's important information is in one place. And then you have your files, your archive papers, sorting through the rest of the papers, all of your special papers. You set up that system. And that's going to top it off to get you to lasting paper freedom. That's the paper piece that we really want, right? And as we're going through the system, just break it down step by step. We've already done the action file if you did the challenge this week. But where the path membership would fit in with this path system is it just helps you get there, right? It helps sit by your side as you're doing the work. It helps motivate you to do the work. It helps if you hit an obstacle. Then you have me by your side to ask a question and help you get past it or help you adjust something. So it's just going to help you get to the top so much easier, faster, and more fun. But I wanted to see if I have, I should have, but let's see. I do. Okay, but when you have a, a system that flows, this is our last step. It's having that system that flows. So that way your system maintains itself and it just becomes like this little ecosystem for papers, right? So this is an example. This is the paper path system. This is an example of how each part of the system is essential and does a vital part. So your action file is your gatekeeper, right? This is the CEO's secretary or administrative assistant who is going to make sure to get rid of any calls, keep people off the schedule that don't really need to be on there for the CEO. That's your action file, right? So all the papers, when they come in, hit the action file or they get trashed, recycled, put in. Like those are the only choices. Once they're in the action file and you've completed all the steps, then from that action file, the next step is, does it go into file or can you let go of the paper? Do you still need it? Do you want to scan it first and let it go? Do you want to file it because you have to keep it? But the action file is your first line of defense. So it's weeding out a lot of that junk that would have normally just gone into your file cabinet by default because you just don't have anything filtering it. But your gatekeeper is kicking out the first line of defense a lot of that. Then your next section that you have is your short-term self-purging files. Now these short-term files, this is where all of the papers that you keep for one year or less can live. And once the year is done, you keep them for an entire year. So about a year's worth of records. Once that year is done, then there's a really quick review process to see, does this go in your archive main filing cabinet files? Or can they go now? Because you had it for a year and you no longer need it. Most of our papers, like 80% of our papers, we really don't need for longer than a year. Probably 90%, quite honestly. Really closer to 90% these days. But we just don't need to keep them past that year or so. So if you have a system between the action file and the main filing system, that is your one year filing system. So you have a year's worth of records at all times. Then that can also help filter out papers before it gets to the main filing cabinet and overstuff it. Because the next place from here is either recycle, shred, or your long-term files, your archive files. So this could be your filing cabinet. For me, as you see, it's actually a file box because there are so few that make it past my gatekeeper and my secondary filter at one year short-term files that my long-term files are nice and lean. Yours could be more. It all depends on what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep for longer than a year. 
Yours might be the file cabinet, and that's okay. I mean, if I can get mine down to one box, I'm sure a cord or a file cabinet will never get over stuff for you. So your file cabinet is nice and lean, and these are the papers that you keep longer than a year because you've already filtered out with the two steps beforehand. And then, of course, there's some things that don't belong in your long-term files, but you do need to keep them. So some of the data you want in those important papers where you can grab it and go because you can't grab a file cabinet and take it with you. But it's really helpful to have insurance policy numbers, contact information, passwords, all of that important stuff if something were to happen. It's also important that your family can get their hands on it too. And it's really nice to not have to get up and go to the file cabinet <laughs> to look these things up if you just need to fill something in. So having it at your fingertips is just really nice to have too. So you've got your important papers, and then you have your taxes, vital information, your originals. These would be the fireproof, waterproof, safe type of storage, right? So these are your special papers that would not fit into your regular system. So you want to make sure to have your fireproof and waterproof storage, some of those originals and vital information. And there are some other special papers that we talk about in the Paper Path course, but that's your file system. So it's nice and simple comes in, it goes to the action file. If it still needs to stay for at least a year, it goes to the short-term files. Then after it's been in the short-term files for a year, if it still needs to stay longer than that year, it goes into your filing cabinet. Or there's a special paper, it goes into those fireproof um, cabinet, but that's very, very rare. That's it. <laughs> nice and simple flows easily between each other. And that takes so much stress out of sorting your papers. Because now all of a sudden you don't have to worry about all of those concerns. You've got every level of your worry and taken care of. And as you sort papers, you can fill out your supply finder. You can file things in the right place. And it all just gets settled and you can see the progress and feel that peace and relief. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Hopefully that just wraps it up in a bow. <laughs> you did amazing today. Um, really quickly, I want to see in the chat and then we'll wrap it up. But do you provide answers in paper path resources or FAQ section as to why to keep certain types of papers in case we don't know? So in the paper path course, yes, in the decision making area, that decision making part of the course, that I talk about the whys and I give you specific questions that you can ask yourself and I explain how that, like why you would ask that question and why the answer tells you keep or go. So I got much more in depth in the paper path course in the decision making area. So yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, <laughs> Pamela says some of my files are so old the label fell off. I have seen that so many times, yep. Uh, Barbara says I'm having a hard time letting go of old papers. So I kept all phone bills, electric bills, a little easier with electric records on accounts. Yeah, and you know, it does take time. It does take time. You can't just go for I'm gonna let go of everything that I ever will right away. So you are doing a fantastic job with what you're letting go of. And then you might do another sort through later, but you might never need to, depending on how much you've let go of, it might just work out in your file cabinet just fine. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just celebrate what you are doing because you're doing amazing. Lovely Marie says, I took a coffee pot box and turned it into an action file system until I can get something else, even though I'm out of sight, out of mind. Yay! Woot, woot, woot. Yes, I love it. Cindy says, do you have different colors for different categories? Um, I personally like different colors for different categories. Not everybody does. There's a personality quiz for your paper organizing personality type in the paper path course. And you can learn your personality type. And some types love color. Some could care less. So for me personally, though, I do like to color code because it just helps me quickly and easily see the different categories. So yeah. Well, hopefully you feel much more confident and capable and ready to tackle those papers because you absolutely can. Just break them down into one step at a time. Take those little bites. Don't make it massive. And when you're sorting papers, find all that support to answer the the worries ahead of time, all right? And if you need help getting through it, grab the Paper Path course. Right now, there's a welcome bonus, the welcome party bonus, and a free month of the Paper Path, or of the Path membership, I can't talk. A free month of the Path membership if you're not already a member. 
along with your purchase of the Paper Path course. So grab that now if it's something that you're interested in and if it's the right time for you. If it's not, that is okay. Keep doing amazing things though, because you've got this one small step at a time. You're so welcome, Karen. I love you. And Path members, I'm heading over right now. I'll see you there. Bye. Oh, and oh, Peg, replays for this challenge really quickly. Replays for the challenge will be available until um, I believe it is Wednesday of next week. All right. So you'll still have the weekend to watch them. All right. You're so welcome. Bye. I love you.